Hey guys, welcome back to Star Fox Assault. Hello. Curse you. Pigma. Why'd you run curse you. <laughs> yeah, does anyone say curse you anymore? I'm curse convinced spoiled that curse... Again. I'm convinced that curse you is a thing that no one ever said and that they only put into media because they could not actually use swear words. Ah, oh, I see. So, I believe so that that is a phrase that has never been uttered by a real human being. Well, technically, I mean, curse you, te curse might as well be just a censored word. Yeah, it's a stand in, right? Well, well not even that. It's just like, well, you're cursing, so say curse. Or Peppy knows black magic <laughs> and is literally putting a curse on Pigma as we speak. Yeah, maybe that's true. Actually, there's a handful of uh, uh, act uh, voice actors, I believe, from this game uh, who are in the Sly series. Um, the uh, Crystal is, is the voice of Carmelita Fox. Oh, I'm cool. Mistaken. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. So, so the character, Carmelita Fox. So I mean, yeah, like, you know, that means that these actors do have careers as furries. They <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think most of the actors actually do reprise their roles. Like, Wait, in, who does? Uh, I think most of the uh, Star Fox uh, voice actors have reprised their roles from 64 and into Adventure and uh, so on and so forth, and uh, and in Zero as well. Oh, uh, and, and for yeah, and it, it, notice how Fox and Crystal seem to care for each other there. And now that I've played Star Fox Command, I know it's always going to go horribly wrong. Oh, it's just depressing knowing that they <laughs> could, Star Fox that, Command. Dude, you got to tell me. You got to tell me. Oh, you, 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 all you need to do is look him up. Go, Look up the uh, endings on Wikipedia. I they, want you to tell me now. <laughs> they all die. It's the ending of a George R.R. R. Martin thing. They all no. die or become all miserable. Yeah, I don't think. Do any of them actually die? Uh, I, I don't think they do. That's a good question. I, I know some of them become like injured, this like Fox. critically injured by the end of like a, a playthrough. Uh, I think Falco like breaks his legs or something, or, and then he, he he becomes okay. like the next Peppy uh, for the next started. Star Fox team. But yeah. yeah, yeah, but they, they. Why is Command such a bummer? Like, what happens that everyone ends up miserable in that? I don't know. I think the game director was just really, really miserable or something like that. I don't really know. That had to be and, it. But they also thought that was going to be the last Star Fox game. So they're like, fuck it. We won't have a canon ending to the series. Uh, by the way, uh, this I think I mentioned this this level in um, in a previous episode because like this episode, I, I always hated this level because if like what you'll you'll find out soon that uh, um either the viewers and dan because i don't think you've played this right i have not no no like um like see how there's a whole bunch of crap going on and the place that you're going that this is in is huge you have seven things you have to get and soon enough um that soon enough you know the people like crystal slippy and falco are going to get attacked outside mm. and then you're just like oh i have to go out and save them not if you're fast enough. That doesn't have. To, that didn't have to mean my test playthrough or this one. Uh, I, I didn't have to go out. Big once. man over sorry, here. Whoa, whoa, yeah, we got Big a badass over here. No, no, sorry. Expert. I didn't. I didn't mean it like that. I'm just <laughs> saying I most likely got lucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 it didn't happen, and they didn't need uh, help until. Uh, uh, until the second part of the level where you, th there is a level down the road uh, the dinosaur planet level uh, When you do when you are forced to jump between going on foot using the landmaster and and flying in the air And that can get really Jeez, jeez yeah. like Slippy is pretty bloodthirsty right now <laughs> <laughs> This is his first time on foot, you know <laughs> Wait, Slippy on foot? Like every portion in this game should have still been on rails Like I feel like even these on foot sections should be like uh, you guys ever played space harrier Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, wow. Like Space Harrier, wild. it's an on-rail shooter. You're just a guy walking with a gun. If you if you hit the ground, you start running. You know, it's like, I feel like that's what these games should be. Like, still on rails, just now you're running. These levels are a bit of a pace breaker, uh, especially the first time you play it, because, my God, the, the navigational system, like, it, look at that map on the bottom right hand of the screen. Like, it, Pretty vague. you can't tell anything there. Especially because you're in a multi-tiered level. Yeah. Oh, this, this, yeah, this level has about, I think, like, seven floors, and, it's, and you only really need three. Yeah. Uh, so what is what is your goal in this level? Because I see that there's there's this life bar for the monkey guy up so, on the top left. Here so we you are. Have, you have like teleporters you have to kill. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they 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 basically generate like the the enemies, the mooks in this level. You need to destroy all of them. Why? I'm not entirely sure. We're here to locate Pigma. Um, and I believe this is his base of sorts. Um, so this is like you kill all the guys and that like every time you kill a guy it fills up the bar and you actually want want it to be a full bar. I feel like I feel like though if they wanted to just eradicate this entire page, this entire like base, 
They just like, you know, call him the Great Fox, use this gigantic laser, and that's pretty much done. Yeah, they I, have our wings. Like, do something with them. Yeah, our wings have bombs on them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. I don't know why we're like, we have to like do this stealth infiltrate thing. Like, there are levels later on where it's a little more justified, but this one, I, I just don't get. Well, well it's, it's, it would be different if like, you know, you know, the entire point was like to was like to interrogate or find a certain person. But no, you're just like basically just there blowing crap up. Yeah, I do like the the the, the way the, these robots explode though. Like that last one was just like in a rage. It was doing its best George. It was doing its best George the Jungle impression before dying. George of the Jungle. It, it, that's oh man, we're we're really Ooh. bringing up the old days. Oh boy. <laughs> well, actually, is it uh when does uh Mario sixty four turn twenty or twenty five? Isn't it soon? I, I, I haven't felt older since I heard that. Though. I feel like, uh, you know what? I feel like maybe it turns. I, I have an image in my head of Mario 64 coming out in 1996. That seems like a correct year, uh, which would mean this year is the is the 20th. Time to rock that wiki. I should yeah. probably play that game. Yeah, me too. I've never, act I've never actually, well, I, I've never actually played Mario Super Mario 64 beyond the first level. Uh, yeah, not, because, because, not because yeah. I didn't like it, it's just I never owned it. I used to not like it, but I feel like playing it now, I would like it more. I feel like I, I, I would I, go back to Galaxy before and yeah, 64, I, yeah. Yeah, but I feel like I have to play it now because um, there's a um, there's a book, a game design book that I have, and like there's literally is, an entire chapter out? dedicated to Super Mario 64. Which I feel like I, I haven't read that part because I'm just like, I have no clue how what this thing is talking about. What book is it? Uh, game Feel. Game feel. I don't know that one. Oh, and uh, just to confirm, uh, June 23rd, 1996. There you go. Wow, I was only four at that point. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, we were young. Jeez. Yeah. Five year old. Oh, boy. The year that I got my Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't oh, know yeah. what year I got my Sega Genesis. I believe for me it was my fifth birthday, and I, I would assume my parents got me. I tried to, because I was writing an article about, about growing up with the Sega Genesis when you were uh, a little while ago, and. Uh, or, or it was actually, it was recent. Star it's, Fox. it's in the newest issue of 5 out of 10, uh, which you can get at 5 out of 10 magazine.com. Um, and I was, I tried to ask my parents, like, why did you get me, like, why did you decide to get me a Genesis? Like, you obviously knew I wanted video games, but like, why was that the one? And they couldn't give me a good answer, which I found suspect. Not really. I mean, like, to parents, like, it's like, just cheaper, like, right? It's like, just, that's probably the thing. Well, not even that, just like to parents, all video games look the same. No, 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 but my parents knew they weren't. Like my parents knew that Nintendo and Sega were two different things. They knew that there were differences. They knew that there was a new, like, they knew what was going on. They had they had at least an, a, an idea. They, they understood that consoles were different and had different things on them. My parents did not know, and still do not know the difference. My parents <laughs> think everything is a Nintendo. Yeah. Nice. See, well, I never, actually, no, I never well, had that because my parents, they, well, they just they just knew a little bit more. They just knew that that tiny tiny bit more about it. Well, like, like my my parents know that like you know Xbox, Nintendo, and PlayStation are different things, but they can, for the life of them they cannot fit, tell the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's also like you know products of a different time now, so I, I can't imagine that they're you know following them very closely. No, no, of course. No. This is one of the most tedious sections. At least we're at, back in space, but. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall Star Fox 64 and yeah, I was the just last. Say. Yeah, this is this is essentially like another um, uh, Star Fox, like you know, uh, battle with Star Wolf, and they are just as obnoxious, if not more, here than they were in the uh, final level of um, the uh, the map uh, the here looks level. a lot bigger than that map would be, and maybe that's a problem. Yeah. yeah, because they have so much range to go on. But the nice thing is right. too, it, it makes it a little easier for you to maneuver and, and to get out of a lock if they're following you because in 64 uh I, I remember like if, if one of them's on your tail the, the, it's it's almost impossible to, like get away from them without getting into a constant um you know loop to loop lock because whenever you start to turn yeah. they turn too and yeah just, i feel uh, like nintendo 64 like on on star fox 64 the entire fight was just was just turning around yeah and, and if you lost the rest of your teammates <laughs> yeah but they're I, but all I, after your ass yeah, but the at the same time though, I mean, it's it, this is still not as memorable as their original appearance. No, they. I mean, they do give him a little more personality. But 
Yeah, but these seem a lot less imposing now, especially with their like weird jazz theme. <laughs> and, like, I love the jazz theme, but it just does not scream as like it like back in like the uh, Star Fox Star, Star Fox 64, like you know when that theme came on, you're just like, oh shit, what's going on? And it's like here, just like oh, okay. This seems weird. This song that's happening right now sounds uh, very Star Foxy, I will say. Yeah. This sounds like an appropriate Star Fox song. Actually, all of the songs in Star this Wolf. game are um, are, are uh, uh, remixes uh, of the 64 themes. I think there's only oh, yeah. one song they weren't able to get uh, because Rare had the rights to it. Which one? Rare? Did Rare do Star Fox 64? They did, um, they, they did Star Fox Adventures. Oh, and I think right. I think that I think that's mm. I'm not sure if that's how the how the right thing the rights thing happened, but uh, yeah, I, I have it somewhere. On, on my that's tab. weird because I would imagine that Rare at the time, I guess, were they owned by Nintendo at the time, or did no. they just only do Nintendo platforms for whatever reason? Well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I can't remember the situation of Rare, but I know they used to only make Nintendo games, and then they yeah, got exactly sold to Microsoft, which was yeah. probably the worst thing that they ever did. Nah, man, you, listen, you ever play Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts? No, but I heard it was actually kind of crap. Yeah, I heard that, that one wasn't awesome. great. Really? Yeah, that game's wicked. This is the first time I'm hearing that. I know nothing yeah. about the game. All I've, I, I've only heard the criticisms. Like, basically, the only thing, like, I think that Rare getting bought by Microsoft was a terrible thing because, like, what? They've made three notable games ever since they got bought. And then well, Rare were, they were just a different company at that point. Like, a lot of the a lot of the people that were responsible for the, the sort of uh, the high point of the Rare games were gone. I mean, this is sort of the weird thing with... with well, not, no, I, not really knowing who makes your video games, not not you specifically. I mean, everyone in general, right? Well, I it's don't like actually... we attribute. We attri there are certain creators that we are aware of, like we know about Hideo Kojima, we know about Itagaki, we know about Tim Tim. Um, what's his name? You know who I'm talking about. Don't yeah, but it's not it's not really what I mean though, because I think I mean more than just the studio in general just has not done much since they got bought. No, they haven't. Um, they, they certainly have it, but that's the thing is that part of that is that like it's it's like it's almost like taking a movie and being like, oh, it's a Miramax movie, so it must be good. Uh, it, it's it's like attributing the creation of an object to a company instead of a person, which is like or, or a group of people that you're aware of the names of. It's just like it's a problem that video games have, I think. I don't know. That, just, like I, you I, never I, really know who's making your games, and that's kind of. Listen, like I, you know, true. Companies have a feel, right? Like rare games have a feel, at least in certain points. Uh, Platinum games have a feel. Yeah. Capcom games have a feel. Sega games have a feel that is somewhat divorced from even who is making them specifically. But mm -hmm. like, there's specifics here that you, that in an optimal world I would like to know. Like I would like to see and, and see that be more more well known and, and sort of more. Uh, I don't know. I want to know who's making my stuff. I want to know. I want to be able to follow creators in a way that I can in other mediums. So many loop de loops. Well, oh, I can't seem to get Wolf. It's All right, just, man. I think oh, this is one of my. This is. I think Ooh. this is one of my shortest Ooh. like runs of this level. Nice. Is he you dead? Got, oh, thank God, he's got him. <laughs> but they're never really. No, no he's dead. still. He's still alive. Wait, is he? No, no, no. They're. Oh, good. <laughs> God, look at that. He's got nothing. He's not allowed to pick up health bars. Okay, that's not cool. There you go. Now you got him. Uh, no, never mind. Nope. No. <laughs> It, it, it's like that, Sp that SpongeBob song. You do a loop de loop and boom, oh, God. and your ships are looking cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're really tapping into the uh, nostalgia. <laughs> Though I, I swear, like Slippy's just like by himself in yeah, that shit. Where's the rest of my team? <laughs> well, no Wait. one has shields, so you don't need Slippy. <sighs> That's how this works. Slippy's there to tell you how many shields a thing has. Here's one thing though, like they were like shot down in the vastness of space. How are they even still alive? Ah, they're fine. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it too much. This isn't command, Jordan. They're not dead. <laughs> that, well, like, like that doesn't die kill in command. No, I get. I don't think. I don't think anyone like actually dies. I can't remember if someone like passes away though. But like, there's a lot of like like appearances at the end of those uh, the storylines. I'm gonna have to read up on this game. This this feels like when I first heard that like Goku dies in the future because he gets a heart attack. Like I remember hearing that on like the school playgrounds and being like, what are you talking about? 
Like, just, like, having this, like, just, like, like, I don't understand. You, like, what? What happens in Dragon Ball Z eventually? And I feel like I, this is this is a similar thing. Like, I, I, I need to read up and know what happens in Star Fox Command. There's just some it seems games, like some serious stuff. There's just some games that, like, yeah, that, that take, like, a serious route. And, and you don't really expect that game franchise to do that. Like, uh, I, this isn't, like, a great example. But Cave Story, for instance, I don't know if you guys have seen that game. But yeah, I love Cave Story. Oh, it's a fantastic game. It. it has such a, like, a cute the appearance to it for like uh you know a, like like a pixelated game but uh the, the story is actually pretty dark when you get yeah, into that's the kind of like what uh undertale which came out last year or this year well no last year we're still in 2016 now uh <laughs> undertale is sort of a similar thing right it sort of starts off it's very funny it's a very funny game and, and it's like a very cute game in a lot of ways but uh underneath that is like a lot of darkness a lot of real dark stuff